This trip is nearly over and it was fabulous from beginning to end. And so this section is still really, really exciting and interesting. Right along. So we needed some place to go and we decided the National Museum of Funeral History was something funky we would try out. It was founded in 1992 and we visited on the day that the body of former President George Herbert Walker Bush was being flown back home to Houston. The idea for the museum grew from a guy's 25-year dream of establishing an institution to educate the public and preserve the heritage of death care. Different, but it made a good museum. Yeah, some crazy Texan wanted to be buried in that little outrageous car. In 2005, the museum began a collaboration with the Vatican for what has become its hallmark exhibit, celebrating the lives and deaths of the popes. San Antonio is the seventh most populous city in the United States, and it is in South Central Texas. The Alamo is a mission in San Antonio. More on that later. The Battle of the Alamo, that's why it's really famous, was in 1836, and it was part of the Texas Revolution, in which the Mexican state of Texas won independence and became a self-governing republic, Texas. In December of 1835, in the early stages of the Texas War for Independence, a group of Texans, volunteers led by Collinsworth and Millam, captured the fort. They overwhelmed the Mexican garrison and they took control of the Alamo. On March 6, 1836, after 13 days of intermittent fighting, the Battle of the Alamo came to a gruesome end, ending the pivotal moment of the Texas Revolution. Mexican forces were victorious in recapturing the fort and nearly all of the roughly 200 Texan defenders, including Davy Crockett, died. We loved the San Antonio Missions. They are a National Park Service site and the only UNESCO World Heritage Site in Texas. After 10,000 years, the people of South Texas were faced with drought, European diseases, and colonization. In the early 1700s, many native people of South Texas forswore their traditional life to become Spanish, accepting a new religion and agrarian lifestyle in hopes of survival. The significance of the San Antonio Missions National Historic Park reaches around the world. It's an extraordinary national and international treasure. The missions are an example of the interweaving of the Spanish and indigenous cultures that were a vital part of America's heritage. Mission Concepcion, dedicated in 1755, remains true to its original design, look, and feel. The church stands as the oldest unrestored stone church in the United States. Exterior paintings have faded, but if you peek inside, and we did, you can still see original frescoes and you can see some photos of them. I don't know what happened to my photos of Mission San Jose, the queen of the missions established in 1720 and the largest mission in San Antonio, but I don't have those photos anymore. So you'll just have to trust me that Spanish designers built the mission using Texas limestone and brightly colored stucco. At its height, it provided sanctuary and social cultural community for more than 300 Indians. In 2011, it underwent a $2.2 million renovation to refinish indoor domes, walls, and the altar backdrop. But like I said, my memory is gonna have to serve me and you're just going to have to believe that, um, you know, we really went there. You can see the frescoes here on Mission San Jose, I'm sorry, Mission Concepcion. They all have been there hundreds of years and they're still kind of there, kind of amazing. What was also amazing was that we were able to go to all four of these missions in one day. They're within easy driving distance and again, they also are linked by uh, bike paths and sidewalks. But if you really want to see all of them in one day, you might need to get in your car. And then if you're busy looking at them, you get hungry and thirsty. So you have to hit a restaurant for some delicious Tex-Mex food and perhaps a michelada.
Next, we went to Mission Espada. It is the southernmost mission in the park, and it was established in 1731. And it has the best preserved segment of the area's original irrigation system that was used to bring water to the fields. In 1826, a fire destroyed most of the mission buildings at Espada with only the chapel, granary, and two of the compound walls remaining. Mission San Juan Capistrano was established in 1731. The fertile farmlands used to, to allow for self-sustainable community and its surplus helped supply the region with produce. Today, the chapel and bell tower are still in use. What was amazing is I believe all of the missions do have church services in them. And each one was so different from size to a little bit, well, the architecture was basically the same, but as you can see, there were still variations in style. And just to round out the missions, San Antonio itself was founded in 1718, and it was the first mission in San Antonio, serving as a way station between East Texas and Mexico. And in 1836, as we know, it was closed and it became the rallying cry for Texas against Mexico in their revolution. Remember the Alamo. You might have guessed it was Christmas time here in San Antonio, Texas when we were there. Uh, the architecture, one of the things that was beautiful about it, one of the many things. We did the hop on, hop off bus. We love to do that whenever there is one. And then we did a lot of walking. The river walk, something I'd heard about way ahead of time, was something I just was dying to see. And it's incredible. It is a little river under like one street level down from where traffic drives. And there are walkways on both sides of the river. And you can walk and there are shops and restaurants. And because it was Christmas time, they have their special lighted boat trips. So we paid, I think it was like 20 bucks a person. And at night you sail the river and all of the trees and buildings and everything are lit up with Christmas lights. It was glorious. I, I can't imagine anything much more beautiful. It's 15.2 miles in length and you've got to take it we i think we took it in the daylight and at night for christmas you know we like museums and so we went to the san antonio museum of art in downtown we took i believe the hop on hop off bus and hopped off at the museum this museum spans 5,000 years of global culture and the museum is housed in the historic former lone star brewery on the museum reach of the San Antonio Riverwalk. After a $7 million renovation, it opened to the public in March of 1981. The museum was founded with the intention of collecting various works of art and natural history objects. The museum's collection of more than 30,000 objects representing 5,000 years of history covers important works from Egypt, Greek, Rome, antiquities, Asian art, a lot of Latin American art, and contemporary art. This piece right here, if you talk, it vibrates from the waves of your voice. If that makes sense at all, I don't know. But it was really fascinating. That's why I have so much film of it. We had to have lunch because culture and art make you hungry. So we did stop and we had another delicious Tex-Mex lunch because that's pretty much what's there and it's really good food too. We did have brunch one morning at or near the Pioneer flour mill because they have a small restaurant. The food wasn't that great but I loved the little restaurant. We did go up 750 feet to the Tower of the Americas which overlooks the city. I hate heights so Barb was on the edge looking out and I was a little ways away. You know, if it fell down, I still would have fallen down, but I was farther away from the edge, so it made me more comfortable. But it was really exciting to see the beautiful city below. And 
the mixture of architecture. You can just see all the different styles and time periods. Well, this was obviously not there during the Alamo. These are houses and buildings along, well, houses, apartments, right alongside the river walk. And I don't know what this building is, but I like it. And I like this one too. I appreciate cities that don't tear down their original architecture and build new stuff. Keep them both. Okay, the Buckhorn Saloon. It opened in downtown San Antonio in 1881 when the owners, Albert and Emil Frederick, decided to start a bar and they did a lot of trading with customers where if they brought in deer horns or other parts of dead animals, they could get a free drink. And a lot of that turned into the museum. There's a little bit of everything in that museum from really kitschy stuff to beautiful stuff to things that sometimes, you know, like a two-headed goat kind of thing that I wasn't so much in love with. This knife, Davy Crockett's long knife, and this other exhibit were from the Alamo Museum, which was off of the river walk and underneath some building but I somehow got it stuck in here with the buckhorn because the buckhorn was good. It costs $20 a person to go into the buckhorn and it's a museum where you eat and you drink. I mean, really, it's a saloon and you have to pay to go into the saloon. But then when you go into the saloon, you can look at the exhibits. Austin was on my bucket list too because I like foodie stuff and I thought we should go and visit uh, some of the food trucks. Well, we never made it to any food trucks but we did go to this fancy restaurant in the Driskill Hotel. It was lovely. We didn't see any bats either, because it wasn't bat season, but we did go to the LBJ Presidential Library. It's in Austin, and we reveled in the history and information it presented. President Johnson was the first real civil rights president. He really was. His commitment to the war on poverty and voting rights led the nation, but his legacy is forever tarnished by the horrors of the Vietnam War. A war he didn't start, but a war that dragged him down and out of office, leading us to uh, Richard Nixon. Johnson took the oath of office on the airplane, carrying President Kennedy's body back to Washington. And this is the missal, the Catholic Bible that Johnson had his hand on. Jackie Kennedy appreciated Johnson's thoughtfulness during her time of sadness and shock. Until justice is blind to color, until education is unaware of race, until opportunity is unconcerned with the color of men's skins, emancipation will be a proclamation, but not a fact. Those are the words of Lyndon Johnson and part of why he strove so hard to make equality a reality. President Johnson was a complicated and imperfect man, but the good in him, the goals to help mankind, allowed him to lift his feet of clay and establish programs that made America a much better nation. We are the best that we are today in great part because of him. He left a legacy of social programs with the intention of strengthening America by strengthening Americans, because you cannot have a strong country without strong people. You cannot have a wise country without wise people. Johnson began his career as an adult, as a teacher and got a lifetime certificate from the Texas Department of Education. So if he wanted to leave the White House and go back to the classroom, he would have been able to. Healthcare was not a new thing recently. It was way back in 1912 when Teddy Roosevelt talked about it. And it has been talked about president after president since then national health care to make sure that everybody is healthy physically and mentally. A hand up and not a hand out. He believed in making people stronger so they could achieve things. Not just telling them to climb up, but to help them up 
And then he knew that they would stay there, that improvements in their lives would improve their children's lives and it would improve everything. He got stuck in Vietnam and Vietnam stuck him. Again, not a perfect man, but a pretty good and decent man as far as his concern and compassion for America and Americans. He knew poverty, he saw poverty. He knew that it was gonna ruin the country. And he knew that as president, he could do something, and he did. I love Dan Richards. She could tell it the way it really was and still be elegant and charming. Her wit was sharp and pointed. In reference to George Herbert Walker Bush, she once said, poor George, he can't help it that he was born with a silver foot in his mouth. That referenced the fact that, you know, he made a lot of verbal gaffes. All over Texas, you will see the star. It is their symbol and it is on everything. But now to the Capitol. The state capitol is 302.64 feet tall. As you know, we were in Austin during Christmas time and we just happened upon a lovely small symphony concert in the rotunda of the capitol. Kind of made it extra special. You know how everything is supposed to be bigger in Texas, but since the capitol is the sixth tallest state capitol in the U.S., it's not the biggest. Sorry, Texas, you lose on this one. The construction for the Italian Renaissance Revival style was funded in 1876 and the cornerstone was laid in 1885 and then the building was opened to the public in 1888. The Children of the Confederacy Creed. It's kind of troubling. Because we desire to perpetuate in love and honor the heroic deeds of those who enlisted in the Confederate Army and upheld its flag through four years of war, we, the Children of the South, have united in an organization called Children of the Confederacy, in which our strength, enthusiasm, and love of justice can exert its influence. We therefore pledge ourselves to preserve pure ideals, to honor our veterans, to study and teach the truths of history, one of the most important of which is that the war between the states was not a rebellion, nor was its underlying cause to sustain slavery. Come on, people. They were changing history even back then. Once again, it's a Texas star, and we go to the Bullock Museum. That is also another cool place. The Bullock, Texas State History Museum includes three floors of exhibits, an IMAX, 4D special effects theater, a cafe, and a museum store. We did not go to IMAX or the cafe. The museum co collaborates with more than 700 museums, libraries, and archives, and individuals to display original historical artifacts that produce dynamic exhibitions that illuminate and celebrate Texas history and culture. It's named for the state's 38th Lieutenant Governor, Bob Bullock, and the museum's iconic building is located in downtown Austin, three blocks north of the Capitol. When we were there, they had exhibits on oil, they had exhibits for the for World War II and World War I, excuse me, that was show me. They also had um, an, a ro rodeo exhibit, sorry, and that was... <laughs> That was kind of fun, too. And look, Billie Jean King, it's probably because she played against Bobby Riggs in Texas. And for my friend Jim, a postcard museum. In 1963, President Kennedy was aware that a feud among leaders of the Democratic Party in Texas could jeopardize his chances of carrying the state in the 1964 election. So he decided to go to Dallas and to Texas in general and make some speeches. There was also a relatively small but vocal group of extremists 
who really did not like him and did not want him to become president again. And in Dallas, prior to Kennedy's visit, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Adelaide Stevenson had been physically attacked a month earlier. But JFK decided he wanted to go, that it was important to make that trip. Shortly after noon on November 22, 1963, President John Kennedy was assassinated as he rode in a motorcade through Dealey Plaza in downtown Dallas. Crowds of excited people had lined the streets and waved to the Kennedys. The car turned off Main Street at Dealey Plaza around 12.30 p.m. And as it was passing, the Texas School Book Depository gunfire reverberated in the plaza. Bullets struck the president's neck and head and he slumped over toward Mrs. Kennedy. Governor Connolly was shot in the back. The car sped to Park Memorial Hospital a few minutes away, but there was nothing that could be done for the president. The museum at Dealey Plaza is a must-see. We had a lovely Christmas in the Dutch Star with the animals and with the traditional Norwegian dinner with the exception of no, absolutely no lutefisk. We also had, not this time Tex-Mex, but Numex Mex food and decorated and celebrated the end to a wonderful trip. We started this trip in California, heading east to go to my youngest nephew's wedding. Hit the Quad Cities, went down the Mississippi, went across the South, back west toward California, climbed up into Texas, and had a fabulous, fabulous trip. You gotta go to all these places. And I'm going to go again. I have to do the river walk again. I have everything that I have seen on our travels I wanna see again. How can that be? Because how can I see new stuff if I'm so in love with the old stuff I wanna go back and revisit? I don't know, I have to figure that out. But join neither here nor there and me on future excursions around the country. Little excursions, big excursions, who knows? But come along for the ride. Have some fun. Drink some beer, taste some wine, check out some history. And when I get my electric bike, come along on a bike ride with me. <laughs> 